Salmon Rogue was born in Philadelphia and grew up in Belgium. After traveling in the U.S. and Europe, competing at horse shows as a professional rider, he found a home in the Bay Area. When not working on his PhD in French literature, he also translates French surrealists as well as contemporary fiction. He is the author of Green Lions, a collection of poetry and artwork, which is also a collaboration. His interest in translation has its roots in spiritism, hauntings, and poets rising from the dead. Or, as Paul Eluard put it, if you like a piece of art, sign it. <laughs> translation is a way of making a poem your own of imbuing your poetic voice with the voices of those you admire until your language becomes haunted with the ghosts of all the poets who have gone before you and when you look in the mirror you tra your traces begin to fade. In 1924 the surrealist Paul Eloir published his latest, his last poetry collection, Dying from Not Dying, Mourir de ne pas mourir. He then vanished without a trace, embarking on a world journey from which he never would return, only to come back to Paris and his circle of friends a few months later, as if nothing had happened. <laughs> he then went on to write the remaining 95% of his work, joined the resistance during World War II and became a staunch advocate for communism following the war. He never lived to witness the revelation of the grim truth behind, behind Stalinism, which his wife believed would have killed him. In spite of any of this, Paul Eluar will always be the poet of love and language. L'amour la poésie, the title of one of his most famous collections, conveys the verbal ease with which Eluar never fails to surprise us. The earth is blue as an orange. Mm. Bleu comme une orange, it's in French. So they're all stretching their hands to me. <laughs> I'm going to read an excerpt from uh, one of his last poems called The Castle of the Poor. And um, the collection is called Uninterrupted Poetry. And so it can go on and on and on. <laughs> the Castle of the Poor. Coming from deep below, from very far, we arrive beyond. That's the Epigraph. A long procession of lovers walked out of the prison we get used to. They had all sworn by their love to go together hand in hand. They were resolved not to surrender a single link of their brotherhood. Misery still slithered on the walls. Death still dared to show itself. No perfect law existed. No worthy bond. To love each other was profane, to be in unison was suspect. They wanted to get drunk of one another, their eyes longed to create abundance, their hearts wanted to hatch the sky. Too long had they lived in contradiction, in the chaos of enslavement, wearing away their bridle heavy with fatigue and misdeeds. They threw themselves on one another, smothering the weakest. When they dared to cry for help, they thought themselves criminal or mad. Their hardship was the backdrop for their master's satisfaction. Nothing but despair and kisses with their handcuffs at their lips. Under the fertile sun, nothing but a return to nothing. Nothing but those vanquished by their own abundant candor, clasping a dagger as their proof of valor. They were crowned with their demented nerves. We could hear cries for grace. Grace they set for hunger and for thirst. Grace for disaster and for sacred death. Grace for this injustice. But what do you expect? And the echo replied, We will relish monotony. We will dress up in clothes of mourning. We will live for one more day. We the vultures, we the rodents from the shadows, our blind appetites exalted in the mud. We will only see the sky above our tomb. Far away from that castle of the poor, black with blood and filth, on to the expected revolution, on to future harvests. But always, love contains these palpable outskirts, where hope's forces can take refuge to better free themselves. Poor ones in the castle of the poor, we were two as well as millions, 
who caressed a wizened dream. It vegetated lower than the dirt. If it had risen to our knees, we would have been saved. We conceived of a life without menace, without blinders. We can soften up those brutes, and radiant we can lift the burden of combat itself. If our love is what it is, it is because it broke its limits. It wanted to slip under the hedge like a snake and gain the sky, like a bird and gain the wave, like a fish gain time, gain life against death, and perpetuate the universe. Recall the castle of the poor, those rags trailing behind us. We believed it to be decked with flags. We reflected such an idiotic world. We laughed when we should cry, saw life in pink when it was red, absolved the things that ruined us. I admit I traveled a long way, but I withstood the test. There are times when I renounce it all for no reason, simply because weariness drags me to the bottom of a bygone fog. You see that I am not completely innocent. In spite of me, in spite of anger and refusal, I represent a world that is oppressive and corrupted. The water of my past has not always been refreshed. I couldn't always get out of the vase that held me. My hands and thoughts were forced to clutch at chance too often. Too often did I abdicate myself and live as an extinguished mirror because I lacked the images that could increase the weight of my reflection. I had to dream without a structure, without logic, without knowledge, without memory, in order not to age. Tell me how much I suffered for not being able to deduce the future from my fleeing heart. You who know how hard I tried to join myself to harmony and hope for lasting happiness. The present weighs on us and lifts us both. Better than the sky carries a bird upwind. Today our joy is born, and I am wedding the curvature of waves to a smile's wing. Today the present has become eternal. I do not know the things that you deserve. Except for being loved and cherished to the core of time, my limits, my infinity during that midnight that mixed us up for life. Abandoning ourselves, we live more strongly. That midnight, we were children of yesterday, coming out of childhood hand in hand. We found, we rediscovered, and we recognized each other. When the morning came, we greeted life, our old life, our future life, our life together. We greeted every bit of strength that time infused us with. 